Hi, Phyllis. Jane. Okay, so we are, I think everyone that I had signed up has joined. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start um, just so I can be, so I can honor our time. Um, yeah. So I'm recording this so that we can um, disseminate it because I know there's a few that wanted to join but couldn't join us this evening. So um, I'm super excited to have Jim Ehlert here this evening to tell us about Western Way Crisis Ministry. And I've heard about this ministry for so, as long as I've been here and just the, um, just magnitude of the impact of, of things that they are doing within the communities. Um, and just, uh, it, and it's really extraordinary. So um, I wanna open with a word of prayer and then turn it over to Jim. Please do. So, um, gracious God, we are so thankful for this time that you've given us to gather together. Um, God, we're thankful for um, the opportunity to serve as your hands and feet and to be the body of Christ. And God, we just pray that you will go before us in this time, that you open our minds and hearts and um, just guide us always and everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Jim. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate you all dialing in to talk about one of my favorite charities. I've been involved with them, well, probably ever since I joined Apex United Methodist in terms of supporting them with food and money. But it wasn't until late 2016 to early 2017 that I actually got involved with them deeply. Um, and I have to blame or credit David Brown for that. Uh, David's a member of, of Apex and I think also attends the peak. He came up to me. Well, let me back up. Uh, Tim Catlett called me in 2016 and said, can you play in the Western Wake Crisis Ministries golf tournament? I said, tell me when and where to be. And he said, well, I got something else for you. You have to build the team. The team's paid for but you got to find three other golfers to go play. Mm -hmm. So I did. And while, while we were at McGregor Downs loading up our carts, David walked up behind me and said, Jim Ayler, you need to be on our board of directors. I said, David Brown, I wouldn't put me on anybody's board of directors. I don't know enough about Western Wake. And he said, fine, then be on the golf committee. So I served on the golf committee, which is the biggest fundraiser that Western Wake has. Uh, it brings in about $55,000, but almost, somewhere between $55,000 and $60,000. Um, that number is a challenge to do because the cost of golf goes up each year, but we're, we're holding our own. So if I can, we're going to – now, bear with me. This is the first time I've ever presented. I've participated in a lot of, a lot of Zoom calls. Um, let me see how I do that. Or Wait a minute. Kara, do you share or do I share? Um, you share, I've made it so that you can share, but if you can't pull it up, I've got it minimized, so I can pull it up. Okay, so well, I'll let you pull it up then, Okay. because I just did, and it gave me a whole bunch of mess. Okay. So if <laughs> you'll pull it up. There, I've just got a few slides. Your, time, your timing for this program is really good. Uh, on October 21st, I was elected president of Western Wakes Board of Directors, or chairman. We use the terms uh, interchangeably. We have 11 board members on, on our board. Um, we're increasingly looking for diversity and also representation from other areas besides Apex. Western Wake was founded by four churches and Apex United Methodist remains the strongest supporter. We probably have about 21 churches uh, in the area that support us in one way or another no one as major as Apex. Are you having trouble, Kara? Um, yes, it's taken just a second, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's, like I say, I've never tried. I've gonna, never tried. Uh, we'll get it pulled up though. <laughs> Not a problem. Thank you for being how many people? How many <laughs> people are familiar with Western Wake? I don't want to tell you some things that you probably already know. So you're, Gene, you're the only one. Do you remember when they were behind Anna's Pizza? They used to have them. Yeah. Joe and I used to um, collect the bread from Panera and take it over there. 
that was a spooky place at 10 o'clock at night. Let me tell you. So I'm kind of glad for that. We don't really see well enough to drive at night now. So we kind of stopped that. And I think Panera doesn't even do their bread anymore. Over there. I don't know. I, I think that's right. I don't we think did it we for that. several years. And I'm sorry, that was a very spooky place. Well, that was. And we're so blessed now to have a, uh, a pretty large place uh, out on Mount Olive Road. Or Mount Olive. Uh, Olive Chapel Road. So, <laughs> Carrie, you look concerned. It's not giving me the option to share it. I don't know why. So I'm going to. Let, um, let me see what I can come up with here. Um, it, it's normally does, and I'm not sure why it's not doing that. So, um, yeah, so I'm still working on this. I, I may go get my. OK, wait, hold on. Okay, wait. All right. I think I got it. <laughs> All right. Can you guys see that? Hey, Hold on. It's coming up. All right. Okay. All right. That's... Now you, you've got you've got the software program open. Okay, here we go. Can you guys see this? Western Wake. Um oh, I got kicked out. Actually, what we're looking at is a uh, a blank slide, like you would prepare oh. a new one. Okay, that's not helpful at all. So let me, <laughs> let me go back. I love those computers. Let me see. I'm yeah. telling you that I, I, look, I had this, I thought just right. Here. And now I don't see it. All right. Now can you guys see Western Wake? Well, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. thank goodness. All right. Woohoo. Yes. 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 You can either go down to the bottom of that screen. And do the presenter mode, or you can just leave it like that. Okay, you just tell me what you mean when you want me to switch slides, and I'll just do that. Is that that okay? sounds good. And then, and then someday I'm going to learn how to advance the slides myself. <laughs> All anyway, right, I can't a, see a, anything. Can you, you guys see something? Yes. Yeah. Mine says Kara has started screen sharing, but it's just uh, no. My, I have a little thing here. Hmm. So you don't you don't have the opening slide from the PowerPoint. No, oh. I do. I do. So how come you guys didn't? I got a note that said something quit. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, go ahead. I guess we'll listen. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand, Mary, why you don't have the same slide. I don't either. Well, I think we've already covered the location. Uh, for those of I you don't who, know where the location is, so can I'll you? Yeah, I don't either. I was going to say it's out Mount Olive, uh, Mount Olive, Olive, Olive Chapel Road. Road. Do you know where Publix is on uh, like Olive Chapel? West? You're talking west. West of town, right? Like West Five Forty, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Five Forty Center. Uh, okay. Before you go over the bridge, you're actually going over the Interstate 540. It's yeah. in that little um, uh, development that's largely storage. Thank God, because we use a lot of storage right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, if you're leaving town, and I can't remember the name of the road that you use to come out, uh, it comes right past uh, city government and the skate park. And then once you cross over 55, then you're on Olive Chapel Road. I happen to live at that corner of town too, so it's rapidly developing. Go ahead, go ahead and change the next slide. And I presume everybody will have access to these slides on the recording. Yes, absolutely. So if they can't. So um, Western Wake started out primarily being a choice pantry. And what that means is it looks just like a grocery store inside the building. You come in, you check in and qualify. Now this is before COVID and you actually get a shopping cart and you go up and down aisle selecting what you want to take home to your family. And you can do that twice a month. With COVID, we couldn't let anybody into the building. Uh, so we um, ended up having to put them in boxes and actually deliver them uh, to curbside. People would pull up and we would put it in their trunk or in their back seat. But our goal is to create a healthy and hunger-free and housing-stable community. Mm -hmm. It is getting increasingly difficult to hit that vision. It's becoming too expensive to live in Apex, too expensive to be poor in Apex, let me put it that way. Uh, we try and partner with everyone we can. 
when I first joined uh, the Western Wake, there was a lot of separation between the organizations. Dorcas is very, very big in Cary and does a great job. They wouldn't talk with us about partnering. They almost they were almost afraid they might lose some influence by working with us. All that has changed now. Everybody's cooperating with everyone. So we're, we're basically a food pantry, but we also have um, volunteers that sit down and help the folks plan their finances, help them understand a budget. Um, we do some education, some training. We've got all kinds of resources that we plug into. And um, so we're trying to help these people get back on their feet. We have countless stories of people who were just working right along and a speed bump happened. Either they got laid off or someone got sick at home or one of their children uh, you know, had to go to the hospital, that kind of thing. In many cases, these are single parents, um, not all, but many. And uh, so if, if, they, if they're down, it's tough. They you know they can't work, so they have to make a choice between eating or paying the rent. So we've got some real significant stories. Kara, if you'll advance the next slide, I don't want to read all this stuff. Like I say, we've got eleven board members. We only have six staff right now. We only have four staff. We do a ton of work using volunteers. If we didn't have hundreds of volunteers, we couldn't do this job. So if you're interested, there are all kinds of opportunities at Western Wake to, to volunteer. Um, with COVID, we were limited as to the number of volunteers that could be in the building. With the immunization rates going up and the virus uh, dropping some, we have reopened our choice pantry. We're allowing three to five people in during a time range. Uh, individually no one's in there next to each other uh, and we sanitize everything after everybody leaves um, and we also need volunteers to help us sort canned goods and and you mentioned the bread and all that because we've got a warehouse our landlord has been tremendously um, kind to us and gives us a very competitive rental rate and we've occupied two additional warehouse storage units behind the actual office because we we've, we've, COVID brought out the good in everybody. We received more canned goods donations. If I've packed a dozen green beans, I've packed a thousand cans of green beans. We've got green beans, so don't donate green beans. Um, but so we, do, we utilize volunteers for financial planning to sit down and talk with them about budgeting. So if you have that as your background, we would love to have you join us. We have some other programs that almost had to stop at the time COVID was happening and we're getting those back into uh, activity. One of them is called Impact Coaching and that goes a little bit deeper into the family. Our volunteer social workers uh, and volunteers would actually stay with that family and counsel them, walk them through all the trials and tribulations uh, that they're facing. Our goal is independence and sustainability. We do not want to have anyone dependent, recognizing that we have some that will always be dependent on Western weight. Um, it's just a, a fact, of, fact of life. Okay, Karen, next slide, please. <clears throat> These are all the organizations that interact with Western Wake. Uh, as I say, we couldn't do without the churches in our community. There are 570 churches listed in our corner of the world. Now, now some of them are very, very small. Like they're in people's homes. Um, they're not the size of an Apex United Methodist Church, but all of them are active in one way or another. We have lots of service groups, you know, the, the um, uh, the Lions Club and Rotary and all them get, get involved with us. Uh, we have lots of individuals come in and say, I want to help you out. They volunteer as receptionists to help register the people because we do a, a very syst systematic registration of everybody so that we can track who we're serving and how, how well we're doing it because we also compete for grant money. Uh, it's, it's not just financial donations 
from our churches and individuals. We look for grants as well. And then the, the uh, city governments have been tr tremendous. Uh, we have worked really closely with Apex, the town of Apex. In fact, they set up a special fund with $500,000 in it because there are over 800 families who are in arrears on their electric bills. And the town decided that if these people would come and apply, they could get help and pay some of the back electric bills so they could get their heat turned on again and that kind of thing. Um, so they came to us and asked us to manage the program. So we've got two, what they call UCAP, um, Utility Customer Assistance Program. We have two temporary staff who work with us helping manage that program. So we've got, and then the towns of, of uh, Holly Springs and Fuquay uh, each gave us money to bring our services to that area as well. A lot of, a lot of our uh, clientele has been kind of pushed out of this area because there's no affordable housing and they were able to find some of it in the Fuqua area or um, in Holly Springs, a little bit in New Hill. We're just beginning to break ground on that area in terms of serving clients, but we're, we're busy. We got lots and lots of business. And my fear is with inflation climbing, more people who are living paycheck to paycheck are gonna have trouble. And our goal is to get them back on their feet. So. We've been pleased. And I remember when we did our strategic plan in 2017, one of the things we worried about was our awareness. Nobody knew who we were. Well, that's all changed. Everybody seems to know who we are now. Next slide, ma'am. Oh, that's, that's just a summary of uh, who we're serving right now. Occasionally, we will have people come to us from Durham, <clears throat> Raleigh, Chatham County, we will not turn anyone away. We will serve them if they're not in our catchment area. We will serve them once and make a referral to the proper organization that can handle it. Uh, if we had unlimited resources, we would be serving everybody in Wake County, but we don't. And there are lots of organizations out there doing what we do, and we're blessed. Next slide, please. Here's just a quote from Christina. I love this one. Um, she was laid off twice lived off her savings. So she got to spend her money on her mortgage and keep her house and her children in her house uh, instead of worrying about the grocery bill. One of the things we discovered in COVID is that affordable housing to a lot of our vulnerable people turns out to be hotel rooms. We have a couple of uh, low cost hotels uh, on William Street that work very closely with us because these people, uh, you know, I can't name names obviously, but I'm aware of one, uh, she's a single mother, two children. She's in that hotel so she can work and leave her children in that hotel room. She knows they're safe. They have internet so they can go to school. She wouldn't have that if she went to an apartment. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's not an ideal situation, but she is working as hard as she can. And I'm really proud of her. So anyway, next one, please. Like I said, these are all just real quick. This is just a glance of what we do. Um, we distributed over a, over a half million pounds of food uh, over, over, the cost, over the total year. Just under, just under 10,000 people served. Um, families, households, lots of, you know, lots of folks in those households, uh, 10,000 visits. Now this preceded COVID. I haven't seen our annual report uh, now that we've came through COVID. Uh, and 38% of those were first timers that had found out about us uh, last year. We couldn't do without volunteers. There's over 13,000 hours of volunteer time. And you can give us an hour or you can give us a day. If you want to volunteer, we'll take it. We just absolutely thrive on volunteers. We've got volunteers that have been with us 15 years. We've got volunteers that have been with us 15 minutes. And we love every one of them. Uh, we just absolutely do. The next slide shows you um, kind of our finances, what have you. In-kind services would be the volunteer work. 
a lot of the food that we get, we weigh it in poundage. And there's a calculation that we have to use. Uh, individual donations, churches. Uh, we do have foundations that support us. As I mentioned, <laughs> the three, three, three town governments are primarily listed there. We do have some corporate money. That actually is probably more reflective of our golf tournament. We have a lot of corporations that support the golf tournament and we'll send a team to, the, to play. And that way they can reward their employees and let them have a day on the golf course and help us out. And then some of that is interest earned. The next slide I think is, is uh, something comparable. We have roughly $2 million or 2 million in in-kind services and dollars coming in. And we roughly have $2 million of in-kind services and money going out. So it's, it's a wash. Uh, we are very, very conscious of how much staff we have so that we don't, I'm having trouble trying to say what I wanna say. We are very conscious of how much administrative overhead we utilize. So the, our debt, our, our ratio of, of service, direct service to clients is very, very high. Uh, we have a, we're really on a very thin staff budget. That's why we use so many volunteers. That helps us get most of the dollars right back into client hands, customer hands. Um, next slide tells you a little bit about the... Uh, uh, Jim? Yes. What's future use? Say that again. What is the future use? What does that mean? Future, oh, future use? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that that is more or less a set aside and invest invest like a fund. reserve. It is a reserve fund. That's exactly right. We have we have a program called um, Families Helping Families, and that is a full service program that we had to kind of stop right at this beginning of COVID because we couldn't go into their homes. But this would actually be an on site program where we would help counsel everyone. Uh, talk about the future of their jobs, uh, savings, all that kind of thing. A little bit more in, more up close and personal. So that is that's invested to help uh, with some of the supplies behind that. We um, okay, we have a very lean budget. We do have some investment income, and we are you know trying to manage that. Obviously, it would be wonderful if we had unlimited uh, supplies and, and resources, but we just don't have it. So we're doing the best we can. We've got a wonderful CPA who manages our budget and all of our finances. And we work closely with several of our banks uh, to make sure that we're solvent, have, have good cash flow. But thank you for that question. I appreciate that. And then the final wrap up, because I don't want to spend all this time talking, the, the, is you know, give us your money, your food, your time, and your prayers. Because um, it's Apex United Methodist has been a tremendous supporter. If you have an interest in serving on a board of directors, I would encourage you to give me a call and let, let's talk about it. Um, it is not an onerous uh, job at all. Uh, it will make you uh, tear up at times when you actually see people you're helping. So it's, it's, it's rewarding. Um, you don't have to sign up to serve on the board of directors like I did. I didn't know I was doing it at first. I was on the golf committee. Uh, but working in the pantry inside the inside the storage lockers where we house all the food or making home deliveries. We have a number of shut in families or shut in uh, customers that are clients that cannot come to us. Olive Chapel Road is not on a bus line right now. The town of Apex has promised us that we will have a bus stop out in front so people can get to us. So if you're not in a car or can't get someone to drive you there, it's hard to get to us. So we have volunteers deliver the uh, food to these folks. Um, Mary, you mentioned picking up bread. We have volunteers roll in every single morning, having gone to groceries to pick up meat or produce or flowers. I mean, we have, we have flowers in there and, and it's great to give them uh, and the bread and all that kind of thing. So we're excited that we're starting to reopen. It's an exciting time for us. 
we will basically distribute about 400 turkeys on November the 20th. Uh, we've got volunteers lined up to deliver some of them to home. Uh, Fiesta Christiana will be the beneficiary of about 200 of those turkeys. Mm. We will have 200 turkeys at Western Wake and people will come in and pick up everything that you would you would want for a traditional um, Thanksgiving din dinner, and the stuffing and the yams and all that kind of thing. So it's real. It's it's a busy, busy time this year. Uh, busy, busy time at this time. We are in the midst of our fundraising campaign because year in fundraising, it seems like November and December is a perfect time to ask corporations and businesses for donations as well as individuals because everybody's looking to make sure that they pay the least amount of taxes. So if you can make a donation before 1231, it kind of offsets it. So we, we utilize that to the best we can. It's a great organization. Like I say, we're being we're being drawn slowly into the Holly Springs Fuquay area and a little bit to the New Hill. And I think with cooperation, because we need churches and volunteers in those areas. Uh, you all remember Owen Barrow. He is a pastor in Fuquay. He was so excited when I called him the other day to ask him how we might uh, work with him to serve people there. And he just went, you know, how Owen can be. Yeah. He was on the yeah. team. Man, yeah. oh, I, I want a franchise down here in Western Waco. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, hold so your horses. Yeah. We'll get there, but we need we need a lot of, of infrastructure first before we can do that. Bless his heart. He's really, it's really great to talk with him. Hmm. A lot of good people involved in this organization and doing a lot of great work. And we are in the midst of another strategic plan that we hope to put Oh, hope to put our signature on sometime around uh, the end of December that will handle us for the next four years. And I really think the sky's the limit. We have so many opportunities. We have so many people who are now aware of us um, and, and applauding our good work. We've got a great donor group. Um, some of them are consistent donors. Some of them are one-shot donors. You know, when people couldn't travel with COVID, they contributed their money to us that they might have spent on travel. So that was really nice. We have, a, we have a fairly decent bank account, but we know we're going to spend it. The evic eviction pro, uh, protocol or preventions are of all laps. So we're starting to see people there. Uh, if you remember when the federal government shut down about a year and a half ago, and it was about six to eight weeks before they reopened, well, a lot of our federal workers live paycheck to paycheck. So many of them walked in the door. One thing I'm proud of, we work really hard to preserve the dignity of the people walking in that door. Because we've had so many people walk in who said, I just never dreamed I'd be in this situation. And it happened like that. So we, re we really feel great that we're right there for them. And it really surprised me that so many federal workers in our area live paycheck to paycheck. So when one of those paychecks doesn't come, they're in trouble. They either don't pay their rent or they don't buy food. And it's, 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 not, a, it's not a great choice. So on that cheerful note, I know I have turned you all into donors and volunteers. You know, we, we love the church doing the, 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 the raising of canned goods and and uh, you know all the dairy products and what have you. So that's that's wonderful. Keep it coming, but uh, we'd love to have you volunteer as well if you can. Back to you, Kara. That uh, that was really quick. You talk about being sensitive with people's time. Oh, right. That was <laughs> I'm open to questions. If you have anything, Mary? Like I can't I think see myself, but you're real yeah. blurry. I don't know why. Well, I got it on blur. Well, now you're clear. Oh, that's better. I feel good. So. Um, so what if I want to come in and get free food, if I'm a weirdo, I mean, <laughs> like not sensitive, is there an income limit? Yeah, we have, we have an intake form. When you walk in, our volunteer uh, registrars will meet with you and capture information. <laughs> and there is a threshold. If you make okay. too much money. And how many times a month? Well, we were Let's allowed. Say I met the threshold. How many times a month could I come in? Every, every other week, twice a month. Every, okay. And that's, and, and that's a surprising amount of food if you look at some of the carts. 
because these are Costco sized carts that you're walking up and down the aisle with. Um, so we're happy to we're happy to have the food and be able to give it to them. And they are so incredibly happy when they walk out of there. So Dan and I have volunteered in Chicago area. Wonderful. Something similar to this. We yeah. had our, our own kind of grocery store in our church. Uh-huh. And my funny story is we have a leadership conference at the church. Well, so I was always volunteering every week, you know, and we would have produce and sometimes it was good and sometimes it was bad. But the week oh, yeah. the, uh, the leadership conference came in, they had every color of the rainbow, beautiful produce. <laughs> and they were all set up to get to get new donors. <laughs> I love it. So I still laugh. I walked. I walked in uh, uh, Monday to help unpack because everybody puts them in the brown paper shopping bags. What we didn't know is if you go to a particular. Well, I'll just tell you. If you go to Food Lion and you pay them, I think it's eight dollars and ninety nine cents. They will package a bag with canned goods in it. They'll put four cans of green beans. They'll do whatever you want. But generally what I unpack, four cans of green beans, four cans of baked beans, two things of peanut butter and a, a can of peaches, kind of a mixed bag. Mm. The odd thing about this is they have staff over there that have to take it off pallets, put them in the bags, and then sit them out for us to pick up, which we then take out of the bag. We're trying to work with the, the uh, grocery stores to just designate a pallet. We'll come in with a tow motor, lift it up, stick it in there, and not have to have all that extra handling. So it's really funny. Our, our, we've been trying to get to the people, and they don't understand what we want to want to try and get them to do. We're trying to save them time and money, too, because that's a lot, a lot of staff time to pack all that up. Yeah. So anyway, we live and we learn. Great question, though. So I had a question. Uh, Give me if you ask this or answer this in the beginning, but how did Western Weight Crisis Ministry come into being? Like who's like, I guess, from the- And when? Yeah. Yeah, it was in 1983. And I wish I had thought to get the woman's name. I don't know whether she was a member of Apex United Methodist or one of the other three churches, but there were four very strong women of four different churches who decided that enough was enough. We needed to feed our hungry people. And um, they put their heads together and created a food pantry. And they, and they occupied that scary dark loading dock behind <laughs> Anna's Pizza, between Anna's Pizza and the <clears throat> railroad tracks uh, for years. And um, it wasn't until, gosh, 2010, nine, something like that, they actually had paid staff. They did it with all volunteers and they were remarkable. And then the press began on including financial services. People were hungry, but they also couldn't pay their rent. They were behind on their utility bills. Um, the heat's been shut off, you know, we need to get it started again. So then they branched out a little bit more and did, hired a couple of people to help them that way. But yeah, um, our website has the woman's name. I used to know it. It's, I'm drawing a blank. But 1983, that's, a, that's quite a run. But for the longest time, nobody knew us. Uh, you, could, you could ask the man on the street and they would have no idea. No idea at all. Great question, though. Come on, I know all of you got questions. Here comes I wanna, Sassy. I want to share something with you. Okay. I don't know if this will be helpful or not. But we have a little group called Happy Helping Hands at church that do projects. And a, a couple of years ago, we went in to help. We, we sometimes don't know what we're doing. And <laughs> Becky Leland had right. gone to Western Wake and picked up pallets of beans and rice and brought them into the fellowship hall and we bagged all that. Wow. And put it in smaller bags. 
And then she took it back to Western Wake. Absolutely. But our group is alive and well. If Wonderful. somebody, but we're older, we can't go get it ourselves and bring it to the church. Sure. But if we could work something out, you know, when you all needed some help sometime, I'm sure this group would be glad to. That's wonderful. Thank you, Lynn. I, I never heard You're about welcome. this group, uh, Lynn. Uh, why don't we publicize a little bit more? Because I hadn't heard about it. Of course, well, I'm old too, a, but you know. It, it's been a sort of small group. <laughs> and um, we, we do different behind the scenes things to help the staff. Um, I worked real closely with Becky in the office and discovered how much work goes on behind the scenes that we never know about. Oh, of course. Um, and so I had this brainstorm and we started this little group. And if, if you're interested, oh, we are always welcoming help because I got a call today from Ellen Griffin and I have mustered up our crowd to do the generosity mailing. Oh, wow. 1,200 letters need to go out next week. <laughs> and so we are getting together to do that mailing. We do all kinds of things. Lynn, are you all getting together face-to-face -face or still virtual? No, we, well, last year, they brought a lot of work to my house and I did gotcha. it here. Gotcha. But now we are getting together in the fellowship hall. And we do wear masks. Um, Gene, I agree with you. The church needs to promote that. Heck yeah. yeah well, uh, yeah, uh, we've never publicized it much. It was a lot, a lot of people from the Mayberry Sunday School class sure. have helped. But we're always looking for more willing hands. So oh, yeah. if you're That's interested. Nice. When, when do you meet? Any particular time or just? No, when they no. need us. Uh, we just, what well, we just finished, um, we've met four weeks in a row. We prepped all of the ornaments for the Jesse Tree Project, mm -hmm. Advent Boxes. Wow. And sometimes we're cutting stuff out, but this project, Ellen had cut them out. We did cut the yarn, and then we had to put the yarn on each ornament and tie it in a knot. But we did 75 of them, and they each have 25 ornaments in them. Holy and God. that was a time consuming. Oh, wow. Wow. But wow. it's wonderful fellowship, too. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So, because, you know, our mouths are going the whole time our hands are working. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you look like you had a question on your lips. Um, did you have one? Maybe. Yep. Um, so how do you kind of get started helping and volunteering at Western Way? I would call the number, the 362-0657 number, or go on the website and ask for uh, either Jeremiah, who is our current uh, pantry manager, or Sherry. If you just say, I would like to learn how to volunteer at Western Wake, the receptionist will direct you to one of the staff people. That would be the easiest way. Okay. There may be a button on the website, to be honest with you. I haven't looked, but there might be a volunteer button there. Uh, What's the name of the website? Do. do what? Name of the website? Ah, www.cm.org. It's westernwoodcrisisminister.org. And there may be a volunteer button. There. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate that. I had that on the yeah, open slide, but you couldn't see it. Yeah, I did get it later, though. Hey, Jim, this is Ellen. So I have a friend that is maybe interested in doing some of the financial counseling. Oh, um, wonderful. What would you recommend? How would you, you should, should he call and talk to Jeremiah, or what would be the best avenue for that? Actually, Sherry or one of our, actually, one of our board members will take over on that one. She's in the office in the office quite frequently. If you want to send that to me, I can get it to her. Her name is Julian Kalen, uh, but um, you can also call the, he can call the front desk and they will route the call to her if she's in. That would be wonderful. Okay, okay. all right, and, I will, and, Julian. Uh, 
That that's fabulous. Uh, as it might as it might be obvious to everybody here too, we are in critical need of multilingual volunteers. Yeah. We have very, very few Hispanic speaking volunteers amongst our group. And it really is um, a challenge when some of these folks are coming to our front door needing help, understanding. They get frustrated. No one in the office really understands what they need. So if we have somebody, that would be great. But, oh, there is a volunteer. Good. Thank you, Kara. Kara's on the job, man. She's on that website. She's already picked it up. So, Jim, it's Mary again. I told you, Dan and I worked at our food pantry, and I knew right. that I knew his uh, Mech, uh, Spanish would be like the other language. Oh, absolutely. But do you, but I was very surprised that Russian was our next language. Really? <laughs> I thought it would be Polish in Chicago, but they didn't come in. They took care of themselves, I guess. But yeah. do uh, you guys have a third language that's? Nothing that stands out, as you might suspect, the research triangle part brings in folks from all over the world, but I wouldn't say that any one particular one stands out other than Hispanic. Um, our po Hispanic population is growing leaps and bounds, and for the longest time, they were invisible because they some of them are undocumented and were scared to death that they would be captured by ICE and returned to their country. Um, I remember we did a what we call a pop-up market and it was a collaboration with the police department, Western Wake, uh, the Peak brought their bicycle ministry and we set up over at Palisades, which is a, um, a mobile home park. And there was an open field where we were actually set up under tents. And I remember one of the residents coming up to get food from us and said, don't be surprised if you don't have a lot of people turn out. They are afraid to leave their homes and walk up to you and get served because they're not documented and, and they see the police sitting over there and the police had a tent. They were helping create ID cards for people who didn't have identification. They weren't there to, but they didn't know. That was, you know, that was, that was something unknown to them. So they just never came out. So we're gradually finding some of our Hispanic population that desperately <laughs> needs food, but they're not coming to us. They're afraid to reach out. Part of, part of it is the information that we gather. They're uncomfortable giving that information out. I just hate it that they live in such fear. And we're trying to break those barriers down. Jose Luis and some of his folks and uh, El Centro, which is very active in Raleigh, uh, have been terrific in helping comfort people and send them to us. They're not, they're not totally comfortable, but they're more so because of those two organizations. So we're, we're doing everything we can to reach out to those folks. Well, Jim. you certainly did, Jim. Um, we got to serve with some of the Fiesta folks um, in early September. And Wonderful. they had, or maybe late September, but they had their medical set up and, and giving away food. And it was just an amazing morning to see all the people come it through. Was, it was. Yeah, I was there for the um, vaccines that uh, we were able to uh, engage. Uh, and it was just wonderful to talk to some of them. And I actually got some referrals to Western Wake talking with them. Because I had someone from El Centro standing right next to me. So my identity wasn't in question any longer. It was it, it, whatever you can do. Lynn, you had a question? Uh, no, I have a comment. Okay. You know, I'm always offering suggestions. Okay, you're recruiting volunteers on my show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I plant a lot of seeds along the way. Absolutely. Um, I'm wondering uh, if we have some youth and or college students who may speak Spanish well, who this would be a volunteer opportunity for them. That would be marvelous, absolutely marvelous. But you need to approach them about it, you know. Um, no, that's a terrific but, idea. Well, I just, this is what I do. This is how my mind works. I when I that. hear these things, 
Uh, also, of course, the university with state here, um, they may have a language department, you know, that I'm sure they do. Um, would be willing to work with us. So absolutely, just absolutely. a thought. Yeah, you, you remind me, we also have a cooperative arrangement with the um, University of North Carolina Hospital and they have a mobile van that comes over and parks in front of our building and does health screenings. Uh, oh. They have well, it COVID, uh, we need to restart it, but, they, it, but they, they're willing to come. The hospitals have some kind of resource for um, contacting people with, that need uh, interpreters for different languages. Absolutely. And I don't know how you go about connecting with that, but Worth that trying. would help you a whole lot. It sure would. If you could open one of those doors. Yep, increasingly our clientele. Uh, yeah. speak Spanish and one language only. Not all, quite a few of them. And I'm embarrassed. I've wanted to learn Spanish forever and have tried it a couple of times. And then I forget everything that I've learned because you have to use it. So it's frustrating. Even, yeah. even Jose Luis would come by and give me a word a day when I was working in the office, <laughs> trying to help build my vocabulary. Didn't work. Funny. <laughs> Yeah, Joe's Karen, taking Spanish classes oh. down from Wake Tech, and uh, that he's been taking them for a while. But you know, it's still awkward, you know, to to try to speak another language. I I tried to learn it one time, and I kept thinking in French, which did not help me at all. I know. So, it took too many years of French. And it didn't yeah, that's what I did too. Yeah. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Um, do they take fresh produce there too? Beside canned goods and stuff. Well, no, not just canned goods. We have we actually have the the, the fresh produce. Okay. Uh, and we will keep that as long as we can. And then when we're when it has to be thrown out, we compost it. Oh, we actually we actually have been taking it to the community garden, uh, to Ann Harrison and that group to help mm -hmm. compost because we don't want to waste it. Yeah. Um, we've got one one grocery store we've got to go talk with because our volunteers were really upset last week. They spent hours sorting through it and a third of it was, was usable. The rest of it was rotten. Mm. And oh. you know, it's like they dumped their garbage into our pails and sent them to us. Yeah. So yeah, we got to talk with them. But generally speaking, we have great produce on the, on, the, on the shelves. Do you get food from the food bank in Raleigh? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. They, are, they are one of our major suppliers of meat products for one. And how about does our community garden that our church has, do they donate food to y'all too? We do. We absolutely okay. get that from them. Yeah, they've been a great, great partner. And we try and reciprocate by taking compost back. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> mutually beneficial to both sides. Absolutely, no question about it. Good. I got a question. Phyllis sure. is my fearless Bible study leader. So if she took our Bible study to volunteer one day, like as a group, do we have to go through training? It depends on what you would like to do. If you're coming to show up with a can of paint and paint the walls, we've had volunteers do that. Or you're coming to work in the warehouse, sorting and stacking canned goods, like all the soups. And uh -huh. all the yams and then canned potatoes and all that kind of thing. There's a whole, di a whole different subset. The training takes nanoseconds. Now, if you're going to do financial counseling, obviously, that's a little bit more involved. That kind of thing. Yeah. yeah they but have we, a um, we thing would, on We would engage in, volunteers everywhere. They have a thing in April. Well, they did before BC, before COVID. Uh, uh, a day in late April were called Think Apex. And one of the things you could do to volunteers go sort cans and stuff and i did that you know it you know i don't move really fast these days but you know we could do them sort them and, sh and shelve them you know Absolutely. and it's still a big deal it's not you know put all the green beans here and put the potatoes here <laughs> it's really not a problem you know it isn't we can certainly use the help with covid it forced us to come down on the number of volunteers we used to engage somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 volunteers within our within our warehouses in the main building with COVID, we couldn't do more than six people at a time. Mm -hmm. 
So it really hurt us. And uh, it took a while. I've got photos on my phone. I couldn't get them on here um, of just rows and rows and rows of bags of groceries that people have donated. Monday is a big sorting day. I was in there all day Monday, uh, breaking these bags down and putting uh, various things on pallets. Um, and there were two other people in there with me. So, I mean, we got, we, we touched on it. And then another group came in later in the afternoon to take over. So I would just reach out either online, uh, Kara says there's a volunteer bullet on there or call the front desk and, and they'll, they'll, if they're not able to talk with you right then, they will definitely call you back. I can promise you that. We love, love, love our volunteers. Okay. We I haven't been on the volunteers. I haven't been on the website yet, so I'm sure this is there, but are they open on weekend? What are their hours? Are they open on evenings? Or yeah, Great question. Right now, we are open Monday through Thursday, and then we are open Tuesday and Thursday nights. And, and, the, and the Tuesday and Thursday night is basically outgo. We don't have any volunteers. Um, let, let me rephrase that. We don't have any rookie volunteers in there. Um, because it's largely packaging food and getting it to the curb for pickup. Uh, the Monday through Thursday, we're thinking that we're going to be open on Fridays as well. One of the reasons we were always closed on Friday is because Saturday and Sunday are extremely busy days for either city or town festivals where we'll have exhibits. And we used to have just part-time staff. When I joined the board as a volunteer, we had two staff that worked 30 hours a week, period. That's all. In reality, that's what we paid them for. They worked 60 hours a week. Uh, it was crazy. But now we've got six full-time staff people. And we're thinking with that, we probably ought to be open five days a week and serving clients, knowing that we have a special federal program. It's called TFAP, and I couldn't tell you what it stands for. But it's a federal distribution, and the Lions Club works with us. And cars come in, in our parking lot. Literally, no one gets out of the car. They have a quick registration. We don't capture a huge amount of information. But it's predominantly federal food that they're, what we're giving out. Um, and then we take some of our goods and match them and, and put it in there. So that's a full day on Saturday when we have that going on. And we'll have over 100 cars through our parking lot. It's a tremendous program. And it doesn't matter whether they live in Apex or Holly Springs or Fuquay. Some of them actually live in Raleigh and heard about it because the, the federal government sends out a notice to them on a regular basis. We don't care. We're happy to feed people as much as we can. So we mobilize a lot of volunteers on Saturday as well. But we just feel like it's tough to have staff out there six days a week, that kind of thing. And Sunday's a possibility as well. Fiesta Cristiana, I think, did something recently on a Sunday afternoon. It's a busy place. <laughs> Boy, I've since learned that becoming president. Wow. Can, can we stop by just to look at it? Sure, absolutely. It's... You bet. You know where Olive Chapel Elementary School is? Well, I think we figured out where, where Western Wake sits. But if you're, headed, if you're headed out towards Olive Chapel, it's on the right before you cross over the bridge, over the 540 bridge. The, the building is just right there in front of you. Uh, okay. And you just pull in and come right on in. Um, Love to see you. Jim and Kara, I um, well, just shared this with you. I had a, a long chat with Laura Johnson yesterday. And um, these programs are so informative because we just had the one with Jack Roscoe about Appalachian Service Project. And these are things we hear about at church all the time, but we really don't know the details, what's involved, how to get involved. And I have suggested that we make these like Zoom calls programs available to the church, to the Sunday school classes, to the circles, any groups, because there are other ways just not just financial, that our help is needed, but we need to hear it, I think, mm. and really get more personally involved in some of these things. 
because I've heard about Western Way Crisis Ministry for years, but didn't know a lot of what you've told us tonight. Yeah, well, neither did yeah. I. And it's remarkable when you step up and say, okay, you can elect me president. You suddenly want to learn a lot more about it. Uh, Kara, <laughs> I noticed that you're recording this program and you've recorded other programs. Are they all on the website where you can find them? They are all at apexumc.org and they're all made public. So anyone Wonderful. can go in at any time. And if you ever have issues trying to share it with your Sunday school class, if you'll let me know ahead of time, I'll make sure that you've got everything that you need on that. Um, because it is part of, I mean, part of it is I have a huge heart for missions and, um, sure. but it's just, I think it's, I mean, I had heard about Western Wake Crisis Ministry and Apex Immigration Services and, um, and you know, some of these different organizations, but it is, to your point, Lynn, like they're, they're doing so many amazing things, but we don't hear about it because it's just sort of a part of our um, verbiage that we use regularly. So I think it just helps for us collectively to take pause, to remember what these organizations are doing and how they've become mobilized to do such mm -hmm. extraordinary work. Um, I mean, well, I just, I was telling my husband and son at dinner, I said, it, it is daunting thinking about how far reaching God has just come into our church. And, and I met with an individual yesterday who yeah. she said, one of the things that stands out about Apex are your missions. And, and it is, it's extraordinary, but it does help us to remember to take pause to how can we pray for financially contribute um, personally contribute, um, whether, you know, volunteer hours or whatever we're able to contribute um, to these, to these endeavors, because they're, it's really extraordinary. It's something to be proud Kara, of. Kara, you might ask Jacqueline just to do a, a plug in cross points mm -hmm. that would say that you have a film library of all these. I mean, if you okay. want to listen to um, I don't know that anybody in our church would know they're there Right. Unless they went looking for them. Very true. So be, you know, not and talk uh, with Laura Johnson, too, about our conversation. Absolutely. Uh, because she's thinking maybe quarterly uh, new programs could be offered to Sunday school classes, circles, sure. whatever, sure. Uh, to get a speaker. Mm -hmm. um, be, uh, for example, this is, sounds silly, but they're selling Zoe soup right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, who knows what Zoe is and what they're doing. That's true. If there was a short little blip. And, and now that we've taken Ellen Griffin out of the service, which disappoints me, um, I think hearing some of these little tidbits about these different organizations, even in the service, you know, just telling us a little bit about Zoe background, be sure and get your suit, you know, uh, will help with our missions if you know what is involved well i will say zoe so. won an award um which is it's a worldwide recognition for philanthropic organizations that are doing are, are really mobilized in such a way that they're uh, making a profound impact upon the eradication of poverty and so when i was speaking to jack roscoe today and then um i think that's mm -hmm. Beth, his wife, had sent something to Sheila yesterday, but they won this award, which out of all the philanthropic organizations to win this award is, is extraordinary. So I will say, just as a little tidbit, like next week, you will see something in the slides because it is incredible what, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. Again, another organization that's doing something yeah. incredible in the name of India yeah. poverty and just being the body of Christ. Um, so, I mean, it's very exciting how many things are going on in our church. It's, it's super, super Carol, exciting. You, you need to come back and visit with me again, because we could go on and on. I know we could. I'm going to hush now. Zip it. <laughs> yeah. it. All right. Dan so and Mary are going to go, but thank you, Jim, and thanks, thank you, Jim. Kara. Hey, thank you all for being online with us. It was thank good. Does anyone else have any questions? <laughs> Let's see, Ellen, I thought you had a question. I, I was just getting ready to say, um, I will be glad to, um, at some other time, I know we're all trying to wrap up, uh, talk to anybody about Zoe. I'll be glad to, glad to participate in any conversation. Oh, all right. 
Yes. Good. Uh, they have your next program. Uh, if there's know, another like, program. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. One yes. thing leads to another. That's right. Need anything thank else? You. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Jim. Oh, thank you. you. Thank I really, so I really much. appreciate you all being here. Thank you, Jim. So That's much. good. It's been wonderful. Thank you, Kara, for setting this up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have a great night. You too. Thank, thank you, everybody. You. Bye.